Pretty damn gold. Welcome to episode 67 of Chet and John's Reassuringly Finite Gaming Playlist. My name is Chet Rivers. With me, as usual, is John Denton. Mother boy. Uh, the same thing is, as usual. This is uh, ten, two top ten lists. The ten games we've been playing over the past seven days. Number ones are the games we've been playing the most over the week, last week. And the number tens are the games we've been playing the least. John, put me out of my misery. All right. Uh, number ten for me is Remember Me. Um, oh, yeah. This was a game that I thought, uh, yeah, I'll go back to it. You know, we talked about it last week and I said to myself, give it another go. Uh, maybe I was a bit tired when I played it before. You know, you, you know, give it another go. So I did. Um, I was stuck in the same memory thing that I was doing before the first one. And um, I had to do it again from the beginning of that. Even though I was pretty sure I'd done it. It must have not saved. I don't know. Um, so I sat through the bollocks at the beginning of that, and it gets to the bit it's doing the tutorial of that again, and the game just crashed out on me, and I was like, that seems like a sign that I shouldn't play this again. However, I did. I reset the PS3 and played it again and did that bit, and it is clever, and it's cool, but then after that I just went back into the game world and did a bit more combat, and I was just like, I just... It, I'm not feeling it, and I think it's because I know... It didn't help, of course, that I'm playing it after watching however many video games in this week's E3. Not that uh, a huge amount of them are hu hugely more inspiring than Remember Me, which is quite an interesting game, if nothing else. But it just made me want to not play it and think about all the games that are coming up, and uh, so I didn't. Uh, that's a shame. Uh, it's the kind of thing I think you might like if you got far enough. But then again... I just... I kind of wish it was three hours long. Yeah, so do I. Cost, cost like, 12 quid, and was focused around those memory things and yeah th then i'd bash through it definitely but i know if it's what's it eight eight standard standard length is it uh it's slightly shorter i mean yeah i mean seven eight hours i'd say yeah. but it's the, the amount of time yeah the amount of water treading in it just is what really destroys exactly. it exactly but it's worth experiencing for for, for everything else it's the, if if you're unsure about it and you're listening to this when it's 20 quid it's worth it Definitely. Do, do we know how it did? I haven't checked the charts this week. Three, uh, it came in at number three, I think. Oh, okay, so at least it sold some copies. Uh, yeah. You know, it's good. I don't, I don't wish bad on any game. It's certainly not a, an offensive piece of work. I just, it didn't really uh, click with me. All right. But I, I still think it, it maybe it's been getting a bit of an unfair kicking. Maybe I gave it a bit of an unfair kicking last week considering I haven't played that much of it. But mm. people seem to like putting a boot in on it for some reason. But, um, you know, it's always good when someone takes a, a bit of a risk and puts money into something interesting. But yeah. this one just didn't seem to... For me, it doesn't seem to quite have worked out. Uh, well, I think it's got massive problems, but I recommend it still anyway. Um, OK, my number 10 is a game called Songs of Travel on PC. Um, it's actually a Flash game. It's a game by Stephen Lavelle, who I spoke oh, about. Yeah. We've spoken about who made um, Slave of God. Uh, who goes on to the alias Ink Repair Games. Um, and as I said before, he's unbelievably prolific and he just churns out games like a motherfucker, despite the fact that he seems to be barely surviving on the money he makes. He uh, he survives primarily from donations uh, from uh, PayPal, which you can find if you search Ink Repair. But um, Songs of Travel is... Um, th that's the other thing. It's, it's Flash in a browser, but all of his games, they're so... Uh, lo-fi that they I couldn't imagine anybody who has a computer that's connected to the internet that wouldn't be able to run it most of them are PC and Mac compatible and some of them are flash so this one was on a browser mm. uh, songs of travel um, yeah a message comes up and it says paint me a picture of your fondest vacation memory and up pops this very crude art program um, there's seven colors to choose from really really thick you basically start drawing and mm. then you draw it's like sh seven colors and it's shades from white to green um and you draw something and then next to those uh, colors is a bowl you click the bowl and then you basically from what i can gather it is you paint yourself a picture and then you vomit all over it because the the bowl option just is a unpredictable load of colors that looks like puke 
so it's barely a game. Well, in fact, it's not a game. It's just a thing like I, I don't know. The, the 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 most interesting thing about it is some of the comments that people who've played it have put on the on the actual download page. They seem to be getting something very very interesting out of something that I didn't really. Uh, uh, yeah, seem to seem to enjoy or fo- I didn't see. I mean, I've explained exactly what it is. So if that sounds interesting, go and have a look. But uh, I'm going to continue looking looking through all of his stuff. But mm. uh, this is not a high point so far. <laughs> no, but it sounds less uh, like migraine inducing carnage than Slave of God, though. Oh yeah, no, it's complete. But but it's it, it's something he might have done in an afternoon. Yeah. Um, and I, I yeah, I don't know. Do, draw yourself a, vo- a vocation memory and then puke. I don't know. I don't know. Something to do in it. Well, yeah, I suppose so. I, I, I'm looking forward to more interesting stuff down the line with him. Though. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, all right, my number nine is, is something to do as well. It's a game called Malicious. Now, um, given the short time frame between recording the last podcast and recording this podcast, because someone's fucking off to Germany, <laughs> it isn't me, um, I decided to smash through as much of PlayStation Plus as I could. Um, Everything else I'll talk about later, I knew what it was already, but this game... Have you ever ever heard of Malicious? No, I can't say I have, no. Um, It's like the the styling is very anime. I didn't know. I thought it might end up being an RPG or something like that. Um, It's a weird action game that seems to... It's like a third-person action game where you scoot around these worlds and uh, and attack enemies, but the the way you attack them is almost by firing things off your body and then you're dodging bullets uh, so it's almost like bullet hell in third person but it, it was completely unengaging and very very floppy the cameras camera shit the controls were, were very good it looked nice it was stylish i'm assuming it was just a psn game that i did that completely passed me by but um yeah it just it, when it comes to stuff on ps plus because you can download a lot it's kind of like kind of like netflix if you if you're flicking through netflix and you don't know what you're going to watch if it doesn't grab you within five minutes often you might just switch to something else you know what i mean so that's that's kind of how i feel about um ps plus ps plus stuff this didn't grab me at all plus the like fucking anime girls in weird short skirts that stuff always scums me out so um yeah i just couldn't i didn't want to spend time with the limited time i had to, to play games for the podcast this week i didn't want to spend time on this one when it wasn't grabbing me uh that actually sounds quite shit Is it, it re- it's recent though isn't it I, it was 2012. It said, it, you know, it's, it's decent looking. Maybe there's a great game in there. I, I, I should have looked up some reviews. Actually, I forgot. But um, it, it seemed like it had ideas and potential, but it just didn't do anything for me almost immediately. Okay, a fair play. Uh, well, it's from 2012, which is nice. It's funny. I mean, obviously, people have heard you heard about that Microsoft are going to reward 360 gold accounts by giving mm. them two free games. I was like, oh yeah, that's clearly inspired by PSN but PSN Sony give you stuff like Catherine and Hitman Absolution not fucking mm. Halo 3 how old is Halo 3? And uh, Assassin's they're, both, Creed. they're both five years old oh my god they just uh, don't, don't even get me uh, started Halo 3 might be six years old or even older oh my god I, I, I'm, spe- I'm still speechless yeah we're still I mean this only happened this morning so I'm still <laughs> uh, yeah so yeah I mean all, all fine having those games Chuck them on by all means. Bit weird. This Assassin's Creed Two, Halo Three is a classic Microsoft, you know, Xbox game, so I don't mind that too much. But if that's really what you're shouting about in your conference, those two games, come on, you can go and buy both of them for about fourteen p. Yeah, that's it. It's it's a non gesture. Yeah, second hand. Eh? You won't like that, will you? <laughs> um, okay. Anyway, um, change the subject. Let's. Uh, my number nine is. Um, have you? What, you, what, what happened Sorry, then? I'm adjusting my seat. I'll, I'll sit differently so I don't do the old seat adjust. People don't like that. Well, you. There uh, we go. Okay. Are you done? I'm undone. Genuine. Okay, right. My number nine is a game called The Chickening on uh, Xbox 360. You can, a, shoot, you can pick them. It's an indie game. Uh, this is brand really? new. Really? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's... Um, it's actually not bad at all. Actually, not bad at all. It's a platformer, a side-scrolling platformer, and you're a chicken. Uh, the, the cover art was interesting straight away. It's a guy in a chicken suit who's got like a green army helmet and a rocket launcher and a chainsaw. So I was like, yeah, I'll download that. It's just a side-scrolling game with a, a chicken, and it shoots lasers from its eyes, and you jump, and there's enemies that are like uh, cat heads on human faces and Zimmer frames with eyes. I mean, funny enough, it made me think of um, Black Knight Sword. Um, 
it's that wacky, but it's kind of made in the cheapest. It looks like a really, really uh, like a nine-year-old's collage or something. You're walking okay. around on like what looks like baby's arms that have been like cut out of a newspaper. Right. Um, and for for a game that's as simple and unambitious, it's actually like surprisingly entertaining and it's well designed as well. It's not uh, for most platforms that you play, especially on the indie game space, are just really, really just they're a chore to play. This is actually all right. Um, yeah, I was completely and utterly surprised. It looks... It's completely... Uh, jumble sale, I suppose you'd say. It looks like a collage that a child would have done on the front of a, a school exercise book mm. or something with loads of random stuff. But it's a surprisingly efficient little platformer. It's fine. 80 Microsoft points as well. Good on Cat, Cat's heads on human faces walking around on babies' arms. Yes. That sounds and, horrendous. And there's also, uh, yeah, like, dis- like uh, um, disembodied fingers and stuff. It's it's weird looking and not in an unpleasant, unpleasant way. And it's just fun to play. It's good. The chickening. Check it out. Great name. Yeah. Truly. Um, all right. Sticking with my PS Plus, um, Joe Danger 2, the movie, oh. is uh, number eight. Um, yeah, you, you talked about it ages ago. I've got nothing more to add. I was playing it, and I was like, this is cool, this is fine, this is, it's, it's fun, it's nice, it's bright, it's stylish. Uh, there's, I don't really have anything to, bad to say about it, but it just didn't It didn't grab me. It, it, kind of the same as Joe Danger 1, but, but more so I felt like I just wanted to get back on the normal bike and do bike stuff, and it kept switching me to, you know, I was starting in a minecart and all this sort of stuff at the beginning. It made me either want to play Joe Danger 1, Trials, or Stuntman Ignition from ages ago on 360, because that was obviously, you're a stuntman, and you, that was, that, it kind of had that quite cool trial and error, almost like the club, but a driving game, which, the, oh, that's a terrible analogy. But, um, yeah, it just made me want to play something else, which I feel bad, because if I'd bought it, and this was the only game I had right now, I'd probably stick with it. But again, it's that PS Plus syndrome. It's the uh, the light and shade of PS Plus. Mm. Yeah, Joe Danger is a funny one. I love the first one, but uh, as soon as I started the second one, I just thought. I, but again, I, I feel unfair because it's it's clearly a high quality, polished, well yeah. thought out product. But I, I just I didn't really have the time to give it the time. Mm. Um, yeah, but it didn't. It just didn't grab me again. No. So there's something to be said for for a game like that not not getting you in the first ten minutes. I mean, the first couple of levels they are quite boring actually, yeah. especially if you play the first game and I'm. Um, Obviously, played a lot of trials, and they're very similar. I know how to play those games, so um, yeah, I don't. I feel bad because, like you say, it's it's clearly very well made and a, and a passion project. So yeah, I do feel bad. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. All right. Uh, okay. Right. My number eight is a game called Gun Brothers or Gun Bros, um, which I played on a Windows phone. My girlfriend's got a new Windows phone. Um, she had loads of games on it, so I just said, "Let's have a look." And I played, yeah, Gun Bros. Uh, it's heavily inspired by Chaos Engine. It's like a war-torn environment, and you're two meatheads. It's a twin-stick shooter. Um, looks like it's set on the surface of Mars or something. Um, it's fine. It's uh, the controls are precise almost to a fault because at first I thought the thing was broken because the tiniest gesture will move you or it will shoot in a different direction. I mean, you have to be so precise. Once you get used to it, it's actually quite satisfying to play. Uh, but at first, it's the tiniest movement. Getting used to that is is quite something. Uh, there's a reasonable level of invention uh, in the game. There's these enemies that I thought were really clever where you you shoot them half to death and they lay flat like they're dead, and and then they come up and then. They're basically you're swamped by all these enemies half of them are playing dead and half of them are alive and it's just trying to sort of keep tabs on what's alive and what isn't I thought that was actually quite uh, quite fresh uh, it's all fucking stat up your weapons stat up your characters um, and it's done this really confusing you, you pick up minerals and then you convert them into coins do you want to buy coins do you want to buy minerals it's like oh, it's deliberately it makes me sleepy yeah it's set up I think to confuse people into spending money when they wouldn't normally, um, and yeah, it's it's. I, I played it for for ten minutes. It was reasonably entertaining, but all as soon as I saw all that stuff, I just fucking switched it off. Mm-hmm. Um, but this minerals thing, I just thought that's a really snide device to try and confuse people into because because yeah, it, not worth talking about a chaos engine ripoff that's not really worth playing. Gun Bros, swerve it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm all right for that, Generally. and I don't have the phone anyway. Mm. 
Um, talking of phone games, my number seven is uh, is another free phone game. It's called Stick Tennis. Did my usual thing of going down the list of uh, what's free and hot. <laughs> I hate myself for saying that. Um, and this was the, the first one that jumped out, and you can imagine what it is. I don't know why it's called Stick Tennis, because they don't look like sticks. They're little cartoon men. But um, it's a thoroughly fine phone tennis game. The, the characters move themselves like uh, Wii Sports Tennis. You swipe the screen to aim your shot and the power, uh, get the timing right. It, it works really nicely. Um, it's really fast. Uh, the sound effect of hitting the ball is exactly the same every single time, the same volume pitch, it's the same sound effect. So that is kind of like a drill bit going into your skull. But mm. apart from that, uh, yeah, it's fun. It's got some good puns on um, player names, which I've forgotten all of right now. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, it, it seemed fine. It, nothing was jumping out at me to make me pay for anything either. So, yeah, I mean, if you if you it was fun. Yeah, it's good actually. Stick tennis. It was it was pretty good. Uh, okay, you can't remember any of those puns. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, that's disappointing. Something about curtains. Something that I have to have curtains. No, I don't know. There was one on Goran Ivanovic, but I can't even fucking remember. Sorry. Okay. Uh, shame shambles. Uh, okay, right, my number seven, this is a bittersweet one. My number seven is Mount Your Friends on the Xbox 360. Um, so this is, I heard of this this week. Yeah, this is really bittersweet. I was doing my twice-weekly s- s- scanning the Xbox Live uh, indie game area, and I saw one game called Mount Your Friends and two scantily clad guys grappling, and I thought, oh, great, I'm definitely going to download that. Uh, I started playing it, and not only is it hilarious, it is excellent. It is an absolutely excellent video game. The annoying thing is I thought I'd discovered it, and then I grabbed my phone, and literally, brilliantly, one of our listeners had already gone onto Twitter to recommend it to us. Um, yeah. And then half, I mean, you, you notice that the, 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 the launch trailer's got, like, God knows how many hits. Loads of YouTubers are playing it and getting millions mm. and millions of hits. So it's, it became like a phenomenon in no time. Um and it is hilarious. I mean, if you've seen it, I don't know if you've seen it, you should just go and Google the trailer, mount your friends. Uh, it, you, you just play these big guys. The first one will mount a uh, goat, and then you have to climb on top, and you've got 60 seconds for each guy. You control each limb, each of the four limbs, with the four face buttons of the Xbox. Um, and it's unbelievably entertaining just to play it's uh, first of all it's the hardest thing in the world trying to maneuver these sort of guys <laughs> have you seen it i've watched the, i watched the trailer yeah um, it did look very funny once you get used to it though and you're flinging these guys all over the place and trying to build them as high as you can it's just it's just incredibly fun incredibly satisfying it's a genius idea that i don't know why someone hadn't thought of it before um Besides being amusing, I mean the the, the guy's uh, junk. I suppose you'd call it in America. Of swings round like a, like it's a limb, but uh, you know you can't control it. Um, <laughs> there's really dramatic music. I mean, uh, imagine the end of uh, uh, I don't know who who would it be? Some family friendly heartthrob at the end of a movie is dead, and then he comes back to life and starts crawling along to go and rescue right, the girl. Yeah. That's the music, occasionally punctuated by the odd, which. I mean, <laughs> All of that stuff, I mean, it's amusing. All of that stuff would be for nothing if it wasn't just a fantastically fun to play. And it really is. There's loads of modes. There's loads of content. Um, it is, it's, I, I was blown away by it. And it's genuinely brilliant, and I'm dead serious. Um, the best game on, my, uh, on the uh, Xbox Live Indie Games is Bleed. Mm. Uh, but that's 400 Microsoft points, and it's uh, it's a different thing, really. This is 80 Microsoft points. I'm telling you, there's going to be drinking games that are going to spring out of this thing. And, oh, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. I think it's the best 80 Microsoft points you can spend on the marketplace. And Shit, I, I need to get it. I've it, got 80, I've got 80, 80 your points sitting there, in fact. If you have an Xbox, I mean, at least the troll. At least the troll. You, as soon mm. as you pick it up, you'll be like, this... There could be tournaments springing up about it. It's that fun. And it's that... I was really just thought to myself, I don't know why this hasn't been made previously to this because it's so clever, it works so well, and it's just funny. I mean, next time I've got enough people around, we're taking it in turns and there's, we're going to sort of create some kind of drinking game around it because it is just brilliant. I'm telling you. Is it just single player? No, no. You, well, you can take it in turns. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so it's all, there's all different sort of uh, ways of... Uh, yeah, I mean, you can have... it set up, so you can have, like... I think up to, I, I set a game up, and I had up to, like, eight players in one go, and you take it in turns. Okay. Each guy's got 60 seconds, and you've got to c- c- crawl on top of the other guy. Oh, brilliant. That sounds hilarious. It's just fantastic. Uh, I mean, honestly, if you have an Xbox, 
I think it's the best 80 Microsoft points you can possibly spend on the machine. It's brilliant. That, that's, yeah, I'm getting that. You got, Definitely. You got it. Mount your friends, I'm yeah. telling you. No, I'm there. I'm there all day. Nice. Um, all right. My number six. Six, six, yeah, is um, The Cave, which is another PS Plus. This, You know, talking about PS Plus, look at all this. Uh, this was... You're aware of The Cave? You're aware I of The am, Cave? Yeah, I but but yeah. I've, I've somehow never seen screens of it. I don't know what it is. Okay. So it's the Double Fine game, the, the, the most recent game, I think, um, came out a little while ago. It's uh, Ron Gilbert. The guy who was in, you did Monkey Island and all that shit back in the day. Yeah. Um, it's basically, basically a point and click adventure, but the way you interact with it is completely different. You're a bunch of characters and you have to go down into this cave and solve puzzles. You can control three of them at once, skipping between them. Uh, for example, I had the Knight, uh, Time Traveller, and Hillbilly. There's also like some weird twins, uh, like a monk, some other ones I can't remember. They don't have unique abilities, but apparently later on in the game they have unique areas that tell their own little story. And all it is is you use the three people at one time. For example, one guy had a crowbar. He needed to open a thing. Then you switch to the other one. Once that's opened, the lever pops up, so the other one can grab the lever, which uh, pulls up a gate. Then the fucking third one rings a bell. Then a monster comes out to the bell, and the first one had to go back and get a hot dog get that on a stick, then the monster jumped out, ate the hot dog, and the first one at the top could then press a lever for the claw to go down to get the monster. The, the, this type of, like, sort of logic puzzle, right? Um, the kind, it's basically point-and-click puzzles, but done in-engine, as it were, without having to use language. It's actually... The, the, the verbiage is actual interaction. Um, clever, funny. The It's written well, as, as you'd expect. The cave itself is... Uh, uh, is a character and and sort of runs a narrative uh, like a um, I can't even think of the right word. Just talks the whole time, uh, monologue, whatever. And uh, it, it, it's kind of classy, but again, after a little while, after about probably forty five minutes of this one, I started it, its appeal started to wane because the solutions to the puzzles were reasonably obvious, but the actual mechanics of carrying that out was a bit of a pain in the ass. And it would be things like, okay, I've got the solution. Uh, I bring everything together, but I forgot one component part, and then I have to go all the way back with one character, get that thing, bring it all the way back, and then you might be slightly out. So that stuff isn't quite as refined as it should be. And then on top of that, the platforming itself, because it's all side-scrolling, 2D platforming, the the interaction isn't, isn't amazing. So when you're frustratingly having to repeat stuff that you know the answer to, but you're just having to do the the legwork to actually do it, and the platforming, you know, you slip down when you want to or you can't quite grab the ledge when you want to. It was just kind of building... You, you felt like another maybe two months in the in the pan and it would have come out a lot better because the style's there, the, the, the writing's there, the humour's there, but it just doesn't quite gel together en- enough. But, you know... A, it was cheap anyway, and B, free on PS Plus, or as free as PS Plus is. So no complaints there. It won't be deleted. I, I think I might go back to it because it, it was a lot to like. I think it would work well on um, on Vita, actually. I don't know if it's... I don't think it's available for that, but it, it, it would be a good handheld game. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's one of... That's, that's a game that I've heard so much about and yet I've managed to keep very, very far away from. Yeah, it's cool. It's It's definitely cool. It's not... There's something about the pace of those classic point-and-click adventures, and I, the thing is, I haven't played them since the 90s. I don't think I've played any of them since the 90s, so they're games that have very fond memories for me, but I'm sure if I actually went back to them, I'd find them incredibly frustrating. In fact, I know I would, because I can even remember as a kid not having a clue what to do and just walking around for hours. But you just did that sort of stuff as a kid, mainly because you couldn't look online, because there was no online to look on. You, you, you couldn't afford to buy more games and you, you had a lot more time and patience, I found. So, But nowadays, when that sort of stuff isn't quite as smooth as it could be, I find myself quickly distracted, which is uh, probably my fault as much as anything else because the game doesn't really do much wrong. Genuine. Yeah, it sounds like a weird one, that. Um, I'll play it some... Is it on the Xbox as well? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. I thought it was. At, at PC, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, 
strange. Um, okay, well, my number six is uh, Phoenix HD on iOS. Uh, oh, I yeah. played it on the iPad. I spoke about it a few weeks ago. Um, it's a very, very, very good uh, cave-style vertical shooter that um, looks absolutely stunning on the iPad uh, and looks great on a phone as well. Um, it's got a really strange look to it. It kind of looks like almost... For some reason, I always think of Transformers, not necessarily the fact that uh, the it, it's drawn the same way. It's that just the colours. There's something very strangely retro about it, whilst at the same time it looks really, really new. That's a terrible mm. explanation, but uh, it looks really I nice. I know what you mean. I think because I've also seen the game, but yeah. yeah. Um, they've got... I, like the, I do like the way it's presented. Basically, the game itself's free... Uh, and then you can download new ships, and the ships completely change the game. Um, so you can buy a ship that can slow down time, and there's one where you have a laser and it's activated when you don't move, and there's one where you get into danger and it powers your weapons. It's like really cool. I mean, it's just, it's the game is there if you want. Uh, to, to sort of have the vanilla version, but you can buy different game types. I think that's a really good... If you're going to do, uh, you know, if that's how you're going to do microtransactions, I think that's the best way to do it. Um, so, yeah, I bought an extra ship because I, I've played the, uh, the the vanilla version quite a lot, but I bought this the Phantom ship, which I think just came out like a week or two ago. Um, mm-hmm. And basically, it's really clever. It, it, it's the same game, but... As soon as you pull your finger off the screen, it turns into ghost mode, and for a brief amount of time, you can let the bullets sort of wash over you. Okay. Uh, you only have a finite amount of time that you can do that, but um, it's. I've, I haven't played every shooter on iOS, but it just seemed like the kind of thing that wouldn't work on a console, but just that whole letting go of it at exactly the right moment. Really, I just thought well, that that's a perfect system to implement on an, I, on an iOS uh, shooter, and I was like, I mm. haven't seen it done before. Really, really liked it, um, and it's an excuse to go back to the game. I love the the um, the localized uh, scoreboards, so you can see everyone in your area how how what, the, what their scores are like, and there's a fearsome high score in Brighton. I'm telling you, I don't know how the guy did it. Um, I like the fact that it's got really mellow music. I just mm. I, it's never, I've never played a shooter that's got really chilled music and it's has because it's as hectic as anything you can compare it to but you get into this really nice nice chilled out trance playing it and when you're looking at the in the menus to see what those other ships do if you want to buy them there's it's nicely presented there's little flash videos you can see what how they work and what they do it's just a really nice game if you've got an iOS device Get, at least get the freebie, Phoenix HD. It's really, really good. And I recommend the Phantom Ship, and at some point down the line, I will get another one as well. So, uh, yeah, I think that's a good way to do uh, microtransactions, really. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's good. Uh, sweet, yeah. yeah. As I said a while ago, I did like playing that game when I did. Good stuff. My number five is, um, is Ico HD, or as I've always called it, Eco. But uh, I was badgered by the world to call it ICO, but I still think it's called ICO. Hmm. Anyway, regardless. Um, yeah, on PS Plus this month, this the, the ICO and Shadow of the Colossus HD collection is on there. So, uh, yeah, fantastic. I haven't played ICO. I call it ICO. I haven't played it since... Um, since I bought it when it first came out, I try. In fact, I have actually tried to replay it once, but um, it was too muddy on PS3. This was my original disc version when I had a backwards compatible one. So um, this is the first time I played it since it came out properly. And man, I tweeted this earlier. I don't think there's ever been a classier game ever. It's just this was the game that really said to me when it came out and opened my eyes to what this medium could achieve and in many ways it's probably partly responsible anyway for me continuing into a path into into the industry or at least the journalistic side of the industry just because it came at a time I think I think I'm, I don't know how old I was when it came out I don't know if I was 18 or 16 or no I must have been about 19 in fact anyway a time where I was still reasonably and well uh it, green wet behind the ears mm. uh fucking emotional wreck <laughs> but um still the, 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 there was so many component parts of this game were, were so special and this was still a time when gaming was quite marginalized much more than it is now and you know i always felt like you're having to justify it to people even though you even not in real life whether you'd be doing it on a forum or just in your own head in my own head anyway but this was the game that really said to me that you know the games can be something more than just 
you know, fucking blasting people and, and stuff. You wouldn't guess by watching most of the stuff that's come out of E3, but you, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And, and and playing it this far on, it's still got that incredible classiness about it. And it's actually quite a simple game. It's just rooms with puzzles, uh, A, B, C solutions to most of them. Um, the only complicated stuff is the interaction between you and Yorda. But even that, when you when you watch it now and kind of break it down, it all, all seems quite simple. But I mean, I said this about other games before, but I just don't understand how how it got made. Like I said, the the game I always say that about to myself is Street Fighter Four because I don't understand how they made a game that balanced with that many permutations to everything that every single move is designed to counter other moves which are designed to counter it just even think about it, it's like fucking think about back to the future it just breaks my brain but for for ico i can understand physically how it got made it's it's a reasonably simple game says the guy who could fucking couldn't even write a line of code but you know what i mean but i don't understand how it got you know this is a full boxed game early on in the ps2's life and how did this happen such a mute quiet considered classy uh special piece of work and uh, i just it, it's amazing it's such a shame that the last guardian is apparently on hiatus and may may never see the light of day because uh, they're a special bunch over there yeah i've never played either of those games properly damn I've put, I mean I've played them in sort of bits yeah. and pieces. I remember some some guy forced me to fight one of the colossi bosses in the second. Yeah, yeah. Out and, of context. That's... Yeah, exa- and someone said was trying to convince me that Ico is the greatest thing ever and just forced me to do a couple of puzzles and stuff and obviously yeah, I I need the time to do both of those really. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, as far as I'm aware, it, Ico is not a long game at all. I don't think it I think you can do it in 5 hours. Um it's a shame you haven't got a PS Plus because you just download it and leave it sitting there. Well, I might have PS Plus soon, boy, I'll tell you that. Well, I suppose you, you're going to need it if you're uh, investing yes. in PS4 and given that I'm assuming you don't want to shell out the extra 80 sheets for something that is uh, rather unpleasant from a consumer point of view, then I'd assume you'd be uh, vouching for PS4. I'm stuck. A half. Of, I, we actually had this conversation today because I'm saying to all my friends, look... Backwards compatible. That one thing that really pisses me off that not many people are kicking off about. I don't want to have to have two boxes to play Xbox games on because mm. you can't. I, having two massive bricks, one to play 360 and XBLA games, and the other one to just play Xbox One games. I'm like, <laughs> fucking clutter. Um, mm. But one another thing that people aren't talking about. I know Sony's come out and said all that great stuff about um, the lack of DRM and all that stuff, but Sony use. Uh, but people think it's going to be the end of um, uh, uh, online passes. Whereas they, I mean, I've got The Last of Us sat here. That's got yeah. an online pass. Sony use online passes, so that stuff's not going to go away. I'd be f- I want to see what EA do, though, because... Uh, That's EA, the interesting one, isn't it? Yeah, they're going to have to bring the uh, passes back, but only for Sony and not Microsoft. <laughs> what a mess. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. Uh, what the hell happens because I don't know I don't, this is I've never seen anything like it I don't think it could have gone worse for Microsoft how could it possibly have been, gone any worse they topped it off with a with a rape joke which was just bizarre yeah in the middle of that killer instinct mix. Like, did you, surely that wasn't scripted did you actually say that I mean maybe I, just I can imagine something, just saying something like that and then the second he says it he's just like oh god what did I just say just keep playing forget about it it might and be the that, kind of thing he says to his mates during a fighting game or something yeah yeah he, I, might... I, 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 I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt but given everything else that happened it was a it was just like Jesus Christ guys yeah yeah, I, yeah <laughs> don't say that I mean I'm all for, for a joke but that was just a bit <laughs> yeah but yeah everything else um I don't know the games didn't do a massive amount for me the the Xbox games but then again not that many of the PlayStation games did either it's more price perceived quality of the fact that the PlayStation by all accounts is a more powerful box and and all that other stuff all the uh, the DRM backwards compatible stuff which I think in a few years won't even matter cuz you'd just be downloading everything anyway but yeah 
they they they're having a PR disaster right now over at Microsoft. A disaster. Yeah, I don't see how they're going to come. I honestly think they're going to get crucified at Christmas and then come back and at, when they're presenting some game, some whether it's a new Halo or whatever, they're hmm. going to slip in the information that, and it's going to be completely. De- they're going to slowly work it in like they're giving something to us by saying that they're cutting some of those features. Yeah. But then again, a lot of them, I'm sure, there's fucking secret handshakes between publishers as well. Who the fuck knows? Oh. It's weird. It's weird. But right now, yeah, not good. Not good at all no. in terms of uh, certainly their hardcore perception. But, you know, they've got the extra stuff for FIFA Ultimate Team, the extra, uh, you know, the downloadable stuff first for COD. That's that's all that will matter to millions. Yeah, They'll shell out the extra 80 quid for that. So... We'll see. Yeah, uh, my, my our friend Zeno, he said today, mm. he said I'd pay four hundred and fifty pounds just for Forza, um, and he never buys secondhand games anyway. So to him, it's a no brainer. Mm. Um, and we we all play games together, so we can't break the. And lo- half of half of the people I play games with can't stand the the, the PlayStation pad. I don't know. Whatever we talk, we've been talking about absolute nonsense for ages. Um, uh, what was your, are you done? What were you talking about? Yeah, Ico. Um, Ico, yeah. A wonderful, a wonderful game. Yeah, I need. So to... d- d- keep it classy, Ico. Uh, have you, you, that's yours to keep now. Yeah. Fair play. You download it and then it's just there. Wow. That's... And even if you delete it, I think you can then re-download it, even if it's no longer in PS Plus. Fucking hell! So a yeah, bit... my, my hard drive's just rammed full of gameage. That's the only thing that's wrong with it. Can you put? Can you use an external? Yeah, you can sort the hard drive over. Swap the hard drive over, but can you add an external hard drive? Oh, I'm going to say yes, but that might not be true. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, well, I will play those two at some point. I really will. It's ridiculous that I haven't yet. Um, okay. Mm. All right. My number five is Black Knight Sword. Oh man! On the Xbox 360. I don't know. I saw. Well, the one thing I knew was bothering me because when I edited last week's podcast, I can't believe I finished talking about it and said Black Knight shit. It's the worst thing I've ever said. <laughs> Considering how many things I could have said, such as Black Shite Sword, Black Knight Poor, D, Cac Knight Sword, Lack Ing Knight Sword, Hack Slack, Knight Sword, Slack Knight, <laughs> Slack Knight, Knight Sword, sword Fack Shite Board. I mean, you get the idea. I was just pissed off that I'd sunk to such a terrible, terrible level. Anyway, I saw it sitting on the dashboard. I, that was running around in the shit swamp that is my brain at two o'clock in the morning <laughs> um so i stuck it on black knight sword it just pissed me off even more than it already had done there's bits in it numerous bits where they'll put a collectible they'll bait you into going somewhere that they instantly die and it's like brilliant now i know not to do that next time it's just a really shitty device that the weakest the most piss poor games use and I'm so disappointed to say this uses as well it's another thing to make it harder and more hardcore and hey I bet you can't complete this without dying piss off um, I still think I would have liked it better if it was a half hour cartoon because I love how it looks it really mm. is warped uh, visually I mean there was this great bit where I cut through a load of massive slices of toast and then the next thing, I was in the desert and I passed by a gang of Hell's Angels off the side of Route 66 and they were all standing around watching leather-clad pigs race each other on motorbikes. And I was like, this is awesome. I mean, it looks so... It's so wacky and brilliantly so. And I, But just as a game, it is feeble. I mean, it's a feeble offering. I mean, mm. so I, if, I, if, it, if it had come out and I'd had to give it a score in a magazine, I don't know what I'd have given it, but it would have been fucking low because mm. it's just a... I, it, it, I hate it. I fucking hate it. You know, I, I might finish it because I'm doing it on easy, and it's just it's pleasant to look at. Uh, this is when you don't have to worry about completely and utterly getting screwed over every five seconds. But uh, Black Knight Sword is not recommended. Black Knight shit. No, black <laughs> black shite sword. Fact shite board. I'll stick with that. Uh, my number four is shit man absolution. <laughs> nice. <laughs> he, he's all right though. Um, yeah, I, I played the again another PS Plus uh, top boy. Um, yeah, I played the, the the first couple of levels. It is uh, it's it's all right. Like I don't know. I knew what what it was going into. I knew it wasn't Hitman, Blood Money, straight in hardcore. 
uh, all the options in front of you. Well, you know, everything everybody's complained about. I knew what it was, so I don't. I'm going in with different preconceptions, and you know, it's nice looking. It feels nice. People often forget how fucking shit Hitman Blood Money was to control. It was a piece of junk. Hmm. So this game is smooth as hell. Uh, to control really nice go and do the garot some motherfucker put him in a bin like that was an ordeal just trying to do that smoothly every time i fucked up on blood money is because the controls let me down every time apart from all the other times where i fucked up for other reasons but you know already I, I this at least allowed me to plan and execute what i wanted to do even if what i wanted to do wasn't quite as didn't feel like it had quite quite the scope of um of the older games, and I hear that some levels later on are, are are like that, but what I played felt a bit more controlled. It seemed fine, it just wasn't very appealing, you know. This is coming off the back of watching... I don't mean to be sound about, down about you 3 I'm actually not at all. There's a bunch of games I'm very excited about. I'm so fucking hyped for Destiny. Uh, obviously, the UFC game it holds massive appeal. A bunch of others, the crew from Ubisoft looks sweet. A bunch of games that, that looked exciting, but, uh, you know, generally speaking, a lot of kind of dirgy, gritty, angry, shooty games, most of which I'm sure will be fun, but still. Yeah. After all of that, for hours, uh, playing Hitman Absolution, which is about as grimy as you can get mm. wasn't hugely appealing at that particular moment in time I don't know I think I'll go back to it I don't know if I'll stick it out I want to do a bit more and see if it opens up a little bit I think it's definitely helped going in knowing A not being a massive fan anyway and B knowing what I knew about this game what to expect not going in with um, false high hopes or anything like that but it's it, yeah, mechanically I don't mind it at all, but thematically it's just not doing anything for me. It doesn't upset me or offend me. It's just not grabbing me right now. Uh, yeah, it's it is an unusual case that game. I thought it was pretty good and I did enjoy it. It does open up later on. It, the longer you play it, the sort of more like old Hitman games it becomes. Right. Um, yeah, I liked it. I mean, it is unpleasant. Just it goes out of its way to be unpleasant. I mm. mean, dead nuns beaten to. De- I mean, it's just it, it. It really pushes so many buttons, and it's just sleazy and unpleasant. But as a game, I thought it was quite good. Um, yeah, I do. I do think I'll go back to it a little bit. But after you know, this is the same day as playing Eco's, playing The Cave, which isn't an amazing game, but has a lot of person. You know, a lot of personality. Even Joe Danger, even Remember Me, even. So um, yeah, it was just I wasn't really in that place mentally today to to do hitman so um i don't know and I, I, and I don't know if i will be so i've been playing lots of like more interesting stuff thematically than that recently but who knows i might go back to it all right it's well, sitting there for free yeah indeed well you're not going to miss a whole lot in fact you're going to miss absolutely nothing it's a it's a, it's a more than passable piece of entertainment that's also unpleasant but you know mm-hmm. inessential uh hugely yeah um Okay, my number four is Killer Instinct on the Super Nintendo. Um, How? My little brother's got it. Oh, yeah. Um, a massive it's stash. Just knows. Yeah. Um, they announced Killer Instinct at the Microsoft conference. Now, I there isn't a single... That's the one game. If someone came to me and said, any game you want announced at E3 tomorrow, that was it. I wasn't watching the conference, but I saw Killer Instinct on Twitter and I almost fucking shit myself. And now that I've seen it, Oh, anyway, when I'd heard about it, the first thing I did was go online and look at the clip, and I thought, ah, oh, that kind of looks a bit like Killer Instinct Gold on the Nintendo 64, which was absolutely god awful. But hey, maybe it's going to be all right. Yeah. Um, and so, the, but immediately I had to play Killer Instinct on the SNES. Um, people have started kicking Killer Instinct. Uh, Eurogamer said, oh, it was always shit in the first place. Um, Ryan from um, Blitz Games was just like, oh, I played it the other day, um, and it's like clay fire, and I was like, what are you smoking? I don't understand it. People were sort of like up to give it a kicking I played it uh, for an obscenely long amount of time uh, yesterday and it's still a brilliant game um, it's uh, unbelievably it's one of the most influential games I've played because it's you still feel its influence now uh, the way combos can be massively long, but they're relatively easy to pull off, just involving a change of direction. It, it was the first game to have ultras in it, the first game to have combo breakers in it. Um, it's and it still feels good. It still feels like contemporary fighting games. Um, I love it to fucking bits. It's brilliant. I don't know how anyone could not like it. If they, I'm tempted to say people haven't given it enough of a chance, um, but you know, 
as brilliant as the SNES original is, and the arcade, uh, they fucked it up once with the N64 one, one of the worst mm. games I've ever played. Um, <laughs> and now seeing... I mean, it looks naff anyway, but hearing that it's developed by the people, the, the, the journeyman developers behind Battleship, the game, and uh, Double yeah. Helix, uh, they did something... The, the Silent Hill Homecoming. Oh, dear. And um, uh, then another really bad horror game, I think. Oh, and yeah. it's, it's going to be free. Not even Silent Hill. What's the new one? Downpour, which is all right. Yeah, Silent Hill Homecoming, which is pretty whack. Yeah. Um, it's. Uh, I saw a load of stuff that they'd said about how, oh, it's going to and from the last guys at Rare who were still there. Uh, I mean, Rare isn't a seal of approval, but these guys are... Um, let's just say they've got a lot to prove mm. uh, and the fact that it's going to be free to play with one character and you have to buy other characters if you want them which doesn't make any sense because you have to you know you you, you play an experiment oh, it's fuck. Microsoft, that makes no sense for a fighting game it at doesn't all. it really doesn't I just it's no respect for the property either apparently everyone thinks the property is rubbish but they don't know what they're talking about because it is a classic and all I want at the end of the day all I really want is a is a, is a cheap fucking smash and grab port of the arcade game stick it on xbox live arcade for fucking 1200 whatever i'll pay it mm. um but this is just playing the snes version was a joy and i think it's an absolute classic and if you don't think so i think you should try and have a go it's, it's still it's the most reminiscent it's m more reminiscent of fighting games of this era than it was of well, the one in which it came out uh totally you know unbelievably influential i mean i just i don't know what microsoft it's another thing that i just like microsoft haven't so much shot their shot themselves in the foot as fucking blown both of their own legs off with a fucking shotgun uh i'm annoyed uh there's a chance it might be great on yeah. the xbox one i don't think it will be i mean at the end of the day if it's even if there's word that it's even half as good as the original i'll probably buy an xbox one solely for it but Jesus. the likelihood of that happening is looking really slim and I'm pissed off about it. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, I don't have that history with Killer Instinct. In fact, I never, I never played it. So uh, I don't have anything. All I can remember is it being on Games Master and some guy having to do like a 53-hit combo and me thinking that looked too hard. That's but, a beauty. Um, it's a, it, yeah, but, it, but this it was in games were like 60 quid and we were like, what, nine years old or something. So you got... I wanted Tiny Toon Adventures instead, and I got it, and it was all right. <laughs> That's a good game, though. Yeah, it was. It was all right. Um, yeah, the, the the whole thing is is they are apparently. I'm hearing just before we start recording it that you can buy the whole thing properly, so it's not just free to play. It's also free to play. So um, that's still it's still a weird model. I don't understand why you choose that game as free to play, like a real esoteric, very specific audience. To, fan service game free to play just says mass market to me so it's weird I don't get it it, it, it smacks of people not really know no, what, they, yeah, what but they've got it, well, it, if people are going to get beaten online because you can only pick Jago and then they'll pick the character they get beat, beaten with and it might not be the kind of character they normally play with so they wasted money on it bah, bah, bah. it's just it's stupid yeah I can't disagree with that mm. I can't disagree with that um, the only game that really got me excited about Xbox One while we are on that subject was um was Titanfall, which I thought looked great. It's you know, it's very, it is what it is, but um, because that was the only one that was exclusive to Xbox, wasn't it? Out of all the new stuff that we've seen over the yeah. last two days, that's not Microsoft. But uh, I thought it looked fucking pretty damn good, and obviously the the qualities there with those guys that respawn. Yeah, so it, um, yeah, it looked yeah. it looked like Halo crossed with Call of Duty, and I was like, yeah. that, that looks but with the, like the class of both. Yeah, it looked it did look fun. That I mean, mm. yeah, not going to yeah, not going to so, change the world, but no, 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 but yeah, yeah. Were, they were never trying to. I don't think were they? Yeah. But um, yeah, it does look cool. But yeah, Destiny, Destiny, man. It's it, it's as good as Destiny looks. It's because it's Bungie that, I'm, that gets me pumped. Now. Mm. Anyway, um, my number three is uh, Infamous Two, which was on the bottom of my list on PS Plus, and I thought, you know what, uh, I'll give it another go because I quite like the look of um, Second Son stuff, mainly because they had that one Nirvana tune on the on the trailer, and I was like, oh, that's a cool choice of tune. They didn't go for the obvious. Um, but yeah, it looked really nice, didn't it? I don't know if you saw yeah, the Second Sun stuff, but it yeah. did look nice. Yeah, it just graphically looked really fucking nice. 
Um, so I thought I'd go back to Infamous 2, uh, which I enjoyed the first hour and a half that I'd played already. And, you know, it's really good. It's really good. It's a lot better than the first game. It came out so quickly after it that I wasn't ready for another Infamous. Um, I just assumed it would be exactly the same. But it, they've learned so much from the first game in terms of just stripping out all the boring crap and just making everything as fun as it can possibly be. It's almost like Saints Row in that way. It's not out there like Saints Row, but it's everything's just pared down and, and kind of sanded down to its most fun form. And just moving around that world as coal is just fun. It's, it's super fast. You know, you've got all the grinding stuff that works even better now. They've put stuff in that uh, you can kind of... Their electrical cables go vertically up a building, so you just jump on it and it shoots you like um, like a grav lift almost up the side of a building, so you don't have to get stuck climbing it like Assassin's Creed. You can just keep moving. And then the, the action stuff just plays like um, a really good third-person shooter with... Uh, with some cool physics stuff in there as well. You can, like, fucking launch up cars. And I just fired a car into a helicopter like uh, Die Hard 4 and it causes this massive explosion. It's like, this is just fun as fuck. Uh, the pace keeps going on. You know, it is an open world. And the open world kind of feels a bit dead and bland, to be honest. But if you just keep stacking up mission after mission, it doesn't really matter. You're just using it as a playground. And, yeah, I've decided, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with it. You know, this is really this is a really good game and it deserves... If you've got PS Plus, as I'm sure many people do, and you, it, it's been sat there forever, I'd highly recommend it. And even if you played Infamous One, which eventually lost its way and got a bit boring, and I like the beginning of that game, this is way more fun. It's just, just fucking daft fun. Yeah. It's really good, and um, it's made me excited for the for the PS4 one as well. I re- I played the I only played the first one. I played it when they gave it away after the uh, the PSN outage. That's right. Um, I really loved it as well. I, I thought mm. the first one was slick. I didn't complete it, so I don't know if it went to shit. After yeah, it didn't one. go. No, it didn't go to shit. It's just you know, as so many games do, it just kind of runs out of steam and you know, sputters over the line. It, it, it didn't fall apart or anything like that. Genuine. Uh, I was going to make some terrible joke there about pouring uh, water on coal and steam, and then it wouldn't run out of steam. Genuine. Okay, right, my number three is Battlefield Three. Uh, the Battlefield 4 footage looks absolutely vomit inducingly good. Yeah. Um, the multiplayer, you mean? Yeah, yeah, the multiplayer. I mean, the, 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 Although the single player stuff did look great with all the planes falling in the. Uh, yeah, did, I don't yeah. want it. It just looked great, you know, looked as a spectacle. And it'll be reasonably entertaining to play. It's just I don't, I don't really give a shit. Mm. The, the multiplayer just looked unreal. I mean, the problem is you don't know how much of what we saw was scripted. Uh, yeah, with the, with the skyscraper falling down. And just shooting up and sort of taking the ceiling out and, yeah. you know. I mean, I, we'll, we'll see um, what DICE promised Battlefield 3 was going to be with regards to destructibility it didn't end up uh, being what they said it was going to be. No. Um, but it just, oh god, it looks good. Um, it does. They, they really do know what they're doing. God damn it, it looks I mean... Yeah, it looks unreal. Yeah, it looks unreal. It definitely does. Um, but yeah, Battlefield 3 is, is still great. There's been an influx of people uh, we played tonight, um, and there's a huge influx of people. The amount of people playing Battlefield 3 shot up. I'm assuming, almost, you know, I'm sure it's not stupid to assume that it's because of the, the showing at E3 of Battlefield yeah, sure. 4. Um, and yeah, it's actually, I'm almost certain that's what happened because we played uncommonly well tonight and we just kept winning and winning and winning so um, I, I think it's some poor bastards who thought oh go on see it looks like yeah, Battle 3. Battle. and then we completely smashed them up and I feel bad uh, but anyway bad. you know uh, they'd do it to you yeah they would um, Battlefield 3 is still great but Battlefield 4 is the one yeah it, it looks fucking good mm-hmm. I was going to say something about it and I've completely forgotten the tragedy uh, mind. I, I think isn't Close Quarters free at the moment Oh, is it? I don't know. I might have imagined that. I could have sworn I read somewhere that uh, to celebrate the whole hoo-ha about Battlefield 4, Close Quarters is free. For, oh, right. So if you haven't got that yet, have a look and you might be yeah, able to get it. Yeah, have a Uganda. Yeah. Um, that's right. Pretty damn gold. Battlefield 4, pretty damn gold. Like I said it was going to be before they even released the first image. Is it gold? So, pretty damn gold. Pretty damn gold. It's way golder than Battlefield 3, uh, which was pretty damn blue. I don't know if it was pretty damn gold. Check out that single player footage. PDG, pretty damn gold. John Denton, Chet and John's recently find out playlist. <laughs> Number one journalist. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I didn't see any fucking gold, but all right. PDG. All right. Um... My number two, which I'm guessing is probably high up on your list, in fact, I'm guessing these might be the same, um, is The Last of Us. Yeah. I decided to 
technically a lot of this is also not this week I, pl- I, I replayed a bunch of it is this technically allowed in our rules yeah, whatever um, yeah I replayed a bunch of it because it's so fucking good that I just wanted to do it again and um, yeah it's still amazing I spoke at length about it last week I have I don't think I can add much more to what I said last week uh, I haven't played multiplayer yet uh, I wondered what you thought of what you've played um, okay, I, I managed to keep a lid on it last week, and mm. uh, but I was not impressed by the opening. Um, I thought the game actually gets off to a pretty wet start. I mean, the problem. I will be the first to say that when I started playing it, I sat down less than four hours after the most gushing reviews in history had landed. Yeah, that's um, that's tough. Yeah. Um, but yeah, after the opening few, I mean, it was it was good, it was solid, it was gorgeous, and there were some really impressive aspects of it. But I thought that the um, the, the stealth element was way too oppressive, and I just I, I I was enjoying it, but at the same time, I was just thinking there's too much wrong with this already. Um, but as it's gone on, I'm now uh, I, I wouldn't like to estimate. I'm not I'm not I'm I'm enjoying it so much, and I'm so immersed in it that I'm completely unable to even guess how far through I am. Um, mm. Part of the reason I've not watched everything from E3 and I've kind of kept kept a lot of it at arm's length is because there is no greater pleasure than sitting down. The only thing I knew about The Last of Us was that Naughty Dog developed it and I'd seen the cover. That's it. I didn't see any of the footage at the last E3. I didn't know about the story. I knew nothing. And sitting down and playing a game like that is just... It's the perfect way way to play it. Um, yeah, it's... I mean, so far, I mean, I, I'd say I, I've passed the halfway mark. I Just off the top of my head. I've played it for... a I don't even know. Um, what, what, what season are you in? Uh, oh, it's done in seasons, is it? Mm. Is there four seasons? Yeah. Okay. Um, so a title card will come up? Yeah, it starts in summer. You're fucking joking. I don't even think I've seen that yet. Summer, so it's, it's, summer it happened, is a title card that happens before the the beginning of the game. Not the prologue, but the, the beginning yeah, yeah. of the game. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what I've, I've just got. It's a long game. It's oh, way longer than most action games. It's like twice as long as your average action game. Oh, good. It is a genuine 15, 16 hours. Genuine. Excellent. I thought I've played it for about 10 hours, but I, I haven't seen a title card saying that the, the season had changed. Shit. Um, Re- regardless, then, you've got some, some gleams to come in. I'm not going to say any more than that, but. It's uh, it's not a game. Uh, unlike Infamous One that we just talked about, this isn't a game that sputters. That's all I say. Yeah, um, it's. I mean, it's something something else to to, to behold. It's uh, mm. it's a, another reminder that the PS3 is just when when you know Naughty Dog, as I said, have got the keys to it and they yeah. they know exactly what they're doing, and they love the the storytelling of movies more than anything. And some people really hate that because they do sort of steal a lot of tropes. Well, I say steal, they borrow a lot of tropes from, from mm. cinema, especially with regards to how the cutscenes blend into the in, into the action. Uh, but it's so rich. I mean, the, I haven't noticed one... There's so much dialogue in it. Uh, there's influent, uh, incidental dialogue, depending if you walk in a certain direction, you'll start talking with people and stuff. And none of it's superfluous. It doesn't feel mm. like stuff that... Uh, most games, there's chatter to just fucking fill the air. Uh, but I haven't noticed any of that stuff, and the pacing is perfect. The amount of times I just stopped and thought, I can't get over how much I'm enjoying this. Yeah. And, it, and I felt like I was watching a film because I was that involved in it. Um, yeah. But then again, it is, it's not perfect. Um, no. The, yeah. I mean, I gave it a 9, as, uh, as you know. Uh, it was very, very close to being a 10, but I'm very, very happy that I was able to play the game before the reviews hit because, yeah. you know, I know what I'm like, and I, I try and tell myself not to be like that when a bunch of reviews hit and uh, you know y- you start playing something but I, I implore people remember the game's not out yet it's out this Friday so I implore people who inevitably do pick it up to don't go looking for the 10 that, that's the best advice I can yeah. give you man don't go looking for the 10 you, you won't be able to help yourself probably but if you can just just play the game for what it is and don't try and think it should be this or it shouldn't be this or I don't know it's almost impossible it's like asking you to do like you know raise your own brain it's, you can't actually do it but yeah you just I mean especially with the, the opening hours are, are quite slow and that's just the way the game is and just hopefully you can just enjoy it for what it is and if you try and get that out if you feel it jumping into your mind just try and get out of your mind and just get back to the game think about enjoying the game yeah. or take a break that's another just take a break 
just because I'm only saying this, like, you know, because I want people to enjoy it as much as I did and and not worry about what um, everyone might have given it in review scores. Yeah. yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I think all of that stuff kind of clouded my view of it in the beginning, um, mm. and I was was less forgiving of some of the things it did. I mean, I don't think that one of the main uh, uh, vill- uh, villains, um, uh, uh, enemies in the game, the clickers, as mm. soon as they catch you, you're dead. I'm not entirely sure, because the... the Naughty Dog games is and this one just they kind of like to wash over you and there was instances where I kept because it, it's also saves very frequently yeah where it would jump back to an auto save uh, a clicker would burst through kill me I mean I just kept dying 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 and I was just like this is not this is just frustrating and rather irritating and it just doesn't really feel like I don't know this this one this is, once you get used to the stealth a bit more you start crafting things to get out of yeah. those situations. It, I mean it's it's an uncompromisingly hard game and I played the, the majority of it on hard as well which is very hard. Um, yeah, uh, it took me a while to get into the mindset of yeah this isn't I can't just run through this. Not that I was trying to run through the levels, but you know like mentally run through it yeah. and and do it simply. I, I I had to really really pay attention and switch my mindset to. To what the the gameplay was was going to be, if not because I, at some points I couldn't get through it, but other points I was getting through it in an unsatisfying way, yeah. you know, not stealthing and just like sprinting through a door or something in a way that I wasn't enjoying. So yeah, when I switched my mindset after a few hours, that helped. Yeah, yeah. To be honest, and there were instances where I had nothing, and I uh, there, there's a bit I don't know if you remember where you have to pass through these three gardens in the middle of suburbia yeah. and i had nothing so we had to sneak around and it was one of the most exciting parts of the game mm. so when you take that into account and realize that you're not always supposed to get into rucks that's um, that's important um, and i like the way just there's some things that normally a game would spell out to you that this doesn't i mean one thing that initially i thought was an annoying thing uh because every time you need to change your weapon joel has to take his backpack off and Switch. It takes like a yeah. few seconds to do it. So in the heat of combat, you can't. You're stuck with what yeah. you've got. And I thought that's ridiculous. I don't know. Do I need a rifle? Do I need a shotgun? Then I thought, well, if I've always got a shotgun, if there's someone far away, I've got enough to, you know, the, the kind of the completely basic logic that I would yeah. have to come up with if I was in that real scenario, rather than a game going, telling you, you know, we're too used to being told what to do mm. every turn, which I thought was. Uh, um, yeah, there uh, there are also uh, sort of inconsistencies with the NPCs. There's times when you're hiding um, and Ellie's in plain sight and the people can't see her, which destroys yeah, the illusion. Yeah, it a bit. destroys the illusion, but it's a del- you know, I'd rather I'd rather that than they see her and you get rumbled. Oh yeah, no, completely. But um, yeah, it's a shame when that does happen. There's also bits when you're when you're sort of sneaking around and you're dead silent and, and she's making noise or anyone who's with you makes like really loud noises. I noticed that quite a bit. They, you don't mm. get heard, so in that sense, it's not annoying. But it is it kind of again, it breaks the illusion a little bit. Um, I these are when you think about it, these are minor quibbles. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a it absolutely incredible, it's so immersive. I mean, and mm. I love what they've done with the trophies as well um, because there's basically no trophies in the game. I've had one. Um, which was to do with crafting while you were basically out of the game in a crafting menu, which is fair enough. I mm. remember when, when Heavy Rain came out, I interviewed David Cage, and he said he had a right ball ache trying to... Because he said to Sony, I don't want any trophies at all. And they yeah. insisted, and the compromise they came to was that they popped in the uh, loading screens after, so it wasn't physically in the game. That was yeah. the compromise they came to. If you look at the ones on the last of us, I don't think there's hardly any. Most of them you'll get when you play through it again, or when you sort of go through, yeah, go through the harder difficulties, go after collectibles and stuff like that. And that really meant a lot. I would, without constantly being pinged up saying you've done this, I'll do this, you know, yeah. all, all that shit. I thought that was really good. They've, they've, that's a conscious effort they've done to sort of make sure that you don't lose uh, lose focus on the game. Um, it's it's too early to say. Um, what 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 I think I mean it's 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 marvelous absolutely if you own a PlayStation Three you have to get it it's the reason you own a PlayStation Three it's uh, and and one, one other thing I love uh, people have started to ape Naughty Dog but they were always the first developer that I thought they never reused assets if they, I mean the whole thing all of the Uncharted games are just like you never stop moving and all of the environments are beautiful and it just mm. you just think that I'm going to come back here and do some fucking siege drama so you don't and then you're on to the next part and everything it just and yeah. this is exactly the same the amount of one shot like amazing scenes yeah. the amazing sets I should say that are just used for nothing yeah and I mean fuck me yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't want to even go into detail on that one because it's for people to discover. 
yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, one thing, you, the that scene that you talked about where you had to sneak through that that scene for me, that was a like end of the movie, bloody extended shootout with me ending up on the roof in the middle of things, picking things off, surviving by the skin of my teeth, nightmare. So that just shows I knew this would be the case, that everybody's skirmishes would be completely different yeah. and everybody's emergent stories would be different. And just hearing that your your path through that particular section was couldn't be any been any more different to mine is is brilliant to hear. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. I, I honestly, the more I think about it, the more I think that, that all of those reviews, all of that chat, all of that stuff, um, kind of have. It, it did sort of cloud my opinion mm. of it. From uh, the also, I, I totally agree. The first few, it, it, I, I wasn't really enjoying the first few hours either. I think it does start very slowly. Um, not, yeah, not, not the very beginning, but when the game starts yeah. properly. Yeah, um, and you have to get used to, to to the systems a little bit, yeah. especially with the crafting. Which I've, when I, when I first saw that there was crafting in the game, which obviously I didn't know, I thought, oh, is there going to be tip? That's perfectly balanced. It's it doesn't. I thought it was going to be something other than it is. It still has the momentum of an Uncharted game, but um, uh, yeah. at the same, it is. I mean, it is. It's stunning. And like I said, I constantly just stopped and I thought I'm enjoying this so much it really is it's it's vintage I mean Naughty Dog are on another fucking level anyway Hmm. Um, I will say one more thing though and I'll probably bleep this out on the podcast it is uh, reminiscent in terms of everything in terms of style in terms of tone in terms of uh, in terms of plot from what has happened so far to a very very well liked sci-fi film did you find did, did you not think of anything though very, very well like sci-fi film. Oh, I don't know. Children of Men. Oh, yeah, totally. That's their number one influence. That's what I was thinking, like, actual... I mean, I know that's sci-fi, but, you know... Yeah, did, that, I think that was one of their main... That and the road are their, their main two influences. Oh, they've actually said that, have they? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, okay. particularly the bit in Children of Men where the... Um, the, you know, the bike comes down the hill on fire. That I've holds, just, yeah. I've, yeah, I've just, yeah, I, th- that's what sealed it. But I, I thought, just in terms, I didn't want to say because the, the, I didn't want to give anything away about the plot. But there's definitely similarities in terms of what the plot's about, and uh, mm. uh, yeah, just, the, just the nastiness and the bleakness of the violence and stuff like that. It's, uh, but I mean, if you're gonna, if you're gonna take influence from a film, fucking make it children and men. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a, I love it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm less than halfway through. Maybe even as little as less than a quarter of way through, but special. Yeah, no, I, don't, I think uh, I, I don't think you're as little as far through as you might think. But um, yeah, it is a long game. And I, I'm really excited to hear what you think by the time you get to the end. Schweppes. All right. Well, was that your two or one? That was my number two. All right, sweet. Is your number one stated okay? <laughs> yes, it is. Hey. Um, so yeah, similar themes, uh, different gameplay. Hmm. Um, I've been thinking a lot about themes in gameplay this week. It's been interesting because I watched Nintendo Direct today, and uh, we watched obviously the conferences and everything else. And every setup for one of these big AAA games was, especially the Ubisoft one being the the, the main one. A guy talking about the themes and the concepts and the ideas. Nothing to do with gameplay. These are all story stuff. Whereas uh, Nintendo's one was just literally the minutia of what you're going to be doing within this game. You know what's in the menus in like 3D Land. How to access this? What this power up does? It's a completely different philosophy, and it doesn't. Not no one raised right. No one raised anything like this. But you could talk about state of the case themes all day if you wanted to but what makes it interesting is its gameplay and i talked about that i thought it might be a masterpiece last week ended up dropping a nine on it for for video gamer it's just a brilliant brilliant fucking video game it's sketchy as all hell the word the americans use is janky it seems to be an appropriate word because it stutters it sputters it fucking freezes the frame rate shit it looks like ass but it is a Walking Dead simulation, and it just keeps it keeps on giving. The more you play, the deeper it gets. The interpersonal relationships between characters start happening. The, as the morale drops in your camp, more emergent stuff starts happening. As you start losing crew members, the permanent death. It is the game that so many people have wanted their whole lives, and now it exists, and it just happens to be a 12 quid, or whatever, whatever it costs, 15 quid downloadable game that doesn't have the budget or the uh, 
production values of something like Dead Rising 3 that's coming out, but I'll be... I'll, 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 I'll state my claim now, this would be a better game than Dead Rising 3 will be. As good as that looked, you know, aesthetically from the Microsoft conference yesterday, state it won't be as good a video game or as complete or as ambitious a video game as State of the K is right now. Yeah, um, it's uh, it's. Uh, I, I'm loving the digital delivery. I, I'm loving the fact that the, I mean, again, as I said, I, I'm sticking away from. I, I've just lost interest in previews and trailers and all that yeah, stuff. Sure. I'm just, I, I, it's it interests me less and less. The fact that this just arrived for me completely having with no fanfare at all. I mean, had mm. you heard about this one? Yeah, in I had, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I knew it existed. Uh, I think I'd read a very brief preview on Eurogamer a little while ago, but I didn't realise it was suddenly coming out so soon. Um, so that surprised me. And I also thought it was a slightly different game to what it actually was. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't know what it was. Um, and when I sat down, I was like, this is really good. This is really good. Oh, this is really good. And then I remember the first time I got in, in a car and realised it was actually a sandbox. I was like, mm. whoa. Why hasn't somebody done this before? I read a brilliant review, and I've, I'm really sorry, I've forgotten where I read it. I think it might have been Joystick. Mm. Um, really, really, really bang-on review. But they said something along the lines of, it's actually the most mundane things that you're doing, because you're managing all of the people, and you're making sure that everyone's all right. Um, and you're sort of making sure that all of you, you... You're doing mundane things, but in the heat of all that stuff, the most mental things happen. Um, yeah. What's one of the things, the best things that's happened? Again, it's in the similar way to Last of Us. I think probably things that have happened to you have not happened to me and vice versa. Yeah, and I've done, absolutely. It's, I do like, they have taken something of the Demon's uh, Dark Souls um, sort of zombie you. Uh, you could be, I mean, because the, 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 the Dead Rising style combat is very, very satisfying. You do feel like you're completely in control of it. The gunplay is a little bit sort of, a little bit more problematic, but... Um, mm. At the same time, you can be finished off. I mean, I went driving up. I, I, it's, the great thing about it is you see things. I saw a petrol station on a hill, and I was like, oh, there's bound to be some shit up there. And I just drove up there, got out, and I got fucking set upon by about God knows how many zombies, and I lost my boy. He died. Have you lost anyone yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, that was just like shit house. Mm. Um, the only there there are... I mean, there's so much wrong with it. I mean, presentation-wise, um, it is, as you said... Ludicrous. I mean, yeah. have they made any? Have they said they're going to patch it or do anything to fix it? Because it is unbelievably sketchy. <laughs> um, they, they there's talk of a patch to fix a bug. Uh, I, I hope they go do a refinement patch. I know it's done very very well, so hopefully they've got the budget to do that. It's already. I think it's pushing half a million already, which is amazing for. It, yeah, it's the second fastest selling game ever on Xbox Live. Yeah. So that's good, but um, yeah, it, it is sketchy as all hell. And there's no doubt about that, and it doesn't do a very good job. In fact, it does a, an appalling job of explaining itself. Um, so in some ways, that's good because it's nice not to have your hand held too much, and it's really cool when you discover stuff yourself. But at the same time, for, if I, I said this in my review, if I didn't have to continue because I was contractually obliged to play, I would have ditched it after 25 minutes because I, I don't know what's happening. It's too much information. I don't care, and it looks it looks like shit. Yeah. But do stick with it. Um, oh, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm sticking. Yeah, with I just it. mean the generally. Yeah, peeps. it's uh, it's yeah, really impressive. It's uh, I, I hate to sound like. I mean, th- it, there is something very very bizarre about going between this and I went between this and Last of Us. I don't recommend right. doing that by any no. stretch because just because the controls are vaguely similar and you just end up fucking up. Um, in terms of because it's so there are as sketchy as it is in terms of the way it looks and the way it uh, plays sometimes. The systems within the camps and within the people and uh, all of the looting and all, it, almost everything else seems pretty much rock solid. And mm. at the end of the day, all of that stuff is so much more important. I mean, I know it's, it sounds stupid to even point it out, but I suppose if you haven't seen it, I'm trying to th- imagine if someone hasn't seen the game, just how how bad yeah. it really I mean, the frame rate, especially when you're driving sometimes, yeah. is absolutely comical. It's uh, it's poor, but after I just stopped noticing it. After I mean, I've played the game for about probably fifteen hours now, and I just I barely even notice the sketchy stuff anymore. It just doesn't seem to register. Yeah, I'm too I'm too busy thinking. I think trying to either survive because it gets way harder mm. after um, probably six or seven hours, and all the different zombie types are out there. Even just a basic little recce to the local 
uh, local few houses just to see what they've got, see what governments they've got is um, can be, you know, turn into a nightmare. We're calling in reinforcements and having a huge fucking epic war. But um, yeah, it, it, it's so involving. It's so yeah. completely involving. Yeah, it is. I, 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 yeah, I, so brilliant, brilliant things have happened. I've accidentally set off a load of firecrackers when we're trying to stealth it up to go and get this nice. stuff. From, yeah, I mean, just, just, just fucking comedy. Um, it is. I mean, you were so right about it being basically Walking Dead, the game. Even mm. the way, the, the where it's set, obviously, but that kind of sort of the autumnal brown shades of yeah. everything, and it's, uh, uh, it is very reminiscent of the Walking Dead. It even has that kind of three chord piano somber yeah, yeah. thing that comes in, which is a really nice. That's sort of that lost music as well. Yeah. Um, the, all the music's really good. Some of it's that, that, some of it's tranquil. Some of it's kind of melancholy. Some of it's kind of uh, frantic as well. Also, uh, slight rewind. The music in The Last of Us is fucking unbelievable. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, come back to come back to State of Decay. It, it, everything apart from the graphics and the frame rate are actually really really good. But it's like they had. Twenty pounds, and instead of spending five pounds on makeup, they just spent twenty pounds on a good meal. Oh my god, that's the <laughs> worst thing. I've ever said. Um, it is. I mean, it, I can't. There's nothing that it reminds me of. I can't remember a game that looked this bent out of shape, um, but just played so brilliantly. Yeah, um, it's it's almost like the Fallout in that way that you just forgive all of the bugs and the sketchy shit. Not that there's really that many bugs in this. But I maybe mean, Fallout looked a lot better, a lot better than this. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, it did. Um, yeah, the only, I mean, in terms, I mean, I, I think syst- in terms of the systems and how much there is going on, it actually feels pretty much perfect. But the only, th- the, well, first of all, I think it, the only way it could be made better is if it was multiplayer, mm. um, because uh, but especially when your guy, when your character's knackered, because your um, stamina depletes the whole time you keep playing. So you yeah. want to go home and swap out. If you go home at night, there was this one time I went home at night and there was everyone else had pissed off, so I couldn't. Right. Swap with anyone so i'd just keep pissing around with this uh, knackered bloke and i just <laughs> thought I, I assume they were all out sort of missioning it up and do, yeah. doing stuff um and I, it was so that the fact that that wasn't other people was kind of disappointing i would have liked it so much more even if it was in, in kind of like a, a zombie you uh dark souls kind of way where it's mm. they're not there you know it's just but whether they're leaving notes or they say i'm going to go do this and they're playing yeah, yeah. at a different time from you you know something like that um but this is like this is a uh, a dry run for another game that i was reading isn't that's that right? right yeah yeah so they're going to release a full-blown game i think on the current gen so it'll probably p- appear on xbox 360 um I, i'd imagine it'll probably end up being on the next one but yeah they, they this is a dry run for an mmo Okay, well, I can't say that I, well, I really want to play that game. It's really, I feel like I've done a terrible job of explaining what's good about it because it is a kind of Frankenstein like patchwork of stuff that you've seen a million times before. Um, not necessarily all together, but I love uh, the f- first thing I should probably point out because I had no idea and it didn't really sink in until, uh, until a little while. It is a sandbox, and I don't yeah. think people have been made that particularly clear. Um, it is like Grand Theft Auto Zombieland, um, and w- with all these brilliant systems whereby you're managing the people and you're trying to make sure that everyone's happy. And uh, yeah. yeah, I've heard also that if yeah, if you if you sort of neglect your sort of um, makeshift family, they can start killing themselves and yeah. uh, uh, reacting amongst each other and things like that. But yeah, like that joystick review said, you, most of what you're doing, it's not not uh, mundane to do. It's just it's the kind of stuff that would take a back seat in like a zombie movie because it's just getting the food getting the supplies making sure mm. everyone's all right doing recce's and stuff oh it's yeah it's i mean it's one of the biggest surprises of of god knows i mean i can't remember the last time a game's taken me by surprise this much just came out of nowhere for me yeah like i said i knew what it was but um yeah i wasn't expecting it to be to be so complete and so um yeah so good just it's it's kind of a, an unusual compliment to the last of us as well which is a very almost old-fashioned style of game very this generation style of game if if anything and an amazing game and probably the pinnacle of that style but uh in many ways state of decay is is, is actually more ambitious I and mean, it's not it's not a better game the last of us is a better game but state of decay i've said this in my reviews actually how open will be some people's favorite game ever I'm sure it will be. It, they, people who love zombies and have wanted this, this will be their favourite game ever. 
Yeah, no, I agree. It's a hell of a game. I mean, I, I, if you're planning on playing Last of Us as well, I'd make sure you keep them well away from each other mm. and do one first and then the other. But um, uh, it's really, really, I mean, amazingly impressive, really. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's us. Is that that's us. us? Done? Yeah, that's us done. Sweet. All right. Another one in the can. Um, so check out the Facebook, check out the Twitter, John Denton, Chet Roivers, Chet and John's, check out the website, don't check out the website. Uh, what else do they check out? Uh, that's pretty much check it. Check out that car. Check out... Check out... Check out just check, just check, just check out. Check out of here. Uh, look, uh, uh, next time... We'll see you next time. See you later. Uh, <laughs> uh, we won't be so tired next time again, knackered, and we all won't leave so short a time between the pods so we don't ramble shit about nothing. Genuine chat. Check it. Check it out. Me that you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? I don't get it.